And the Lord Jesus speaks and he says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now, let me read that verse again and listen carefully and look carefully to it as we read it, please. These are the words of the Lord Jesus. He says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth. Tonight's subject is a very solemn one. And tonight's message is a very serious one. And I believe if there ever was a message, if there ever was a subject that needs to be dealt with scripturally tonight, it's the one that the Lord has laid upon my heart for the scene. Suicide. What does the Bible say? Not what does the doctor say, and I am not belittling doctors in any shape or form. Thank God today for men and for women who are gifted to help people who are depressed and to help people tonight who are suicidal. Thank God for such tonight. But the subject is suicide, not what the doctor says, but what the Bible says, the Word of God. Suicide, what does the Bible say? You know, as well as I do tonight, suicide is the scourge of every society. Every society has been affected by it, and every society has been affected with it. But the big question is tonight, what does the Bible say concerning this awful, awful, awful thing tonight called suicide? It's terrible, friends how many young people, and we're steering close to the young people tonight, I know it affects all ages. But what is wrong, friends? What is wrong with people? What can go wrong that people choose death rather than life. Now, listen to the statistics. Suicide tonight is the third leading cause of death. The third, not the thirtieth, the third leading cause of death between the ages of fifteen and twenty-five the third leading cause of death. 
Last year's suicide was the sixth leading cause of death. It has now went up to the fifth, sorry, the sixth leading cause, sorry, the fifth cause of, cause of death. Suicide has went up to the fifth leading cause of death. Last year it was the sixth. Statistics said for last year, this year statistics says that suicide is the fifth leading cause of death between the age of eight. Between the age of eight and fourteen. Try to imagine that this evening. The fifth leading cause of death between the ages of eight years of age till fourteen years of age is suicide. You know, dear friends, this evening, this is the kind of day we're living in. This is the terrible grip tonight that this awful thing called suicide has upon our young people. The fifth leading cause of death between the age of eight years of age to fourteen years of age. I just cannot from the top of my head remember, as for the statistics, as for the numbers of how many children, eight years of age, eight years, not eighty, eight, not eighteen, eight years of age, eight, took their own lives last year. Do you know something, folks, this evening? When I was eight years of age, I didn't know what suicide was. When I was eight years of age, that's something this evening that never crossed my mind. 500,000 young people attempt suicide each year. 500 in the British Isles alone succeed. And what do they do, friends? They leave behind unanswered questions. Those left behind ask themselves the questions, where did we go wrong? Could we not see the signs? But in so many cases tonight, so many cases, there are no signs to see. The very first coffin I ever carried, the first coffin that I ever carried was that of a young fellow of 14 years of age. Shot himself with the father's 2 2 rifle. Left behind a grieving, heartbroken mother and father. The year was 1981, and the mother from that day to this day still hasn't got over the pain. I remember the day of the funeral, and I remember the day when both mother and father were walking behind the coffin, me, a 16-year-old, asked myself the question, if this young fellow could see the heartbreak, could see the pain that he plunged his parents into, I wonder would he have changed his mind. It was a terrible scene at the graveside when the mother tried to get into the grave to be with him. Suicide leaves behind an awful, awful pain, unquestioned, unanswered questions. You know, a number of years ago, my young lassie, when she attended Craigavon Senior High, lost three of her schoolmates 
to suicide in the little village of Laurel Vale. I can tell you something now, that was a worrying time for parents. When the third young lad took his life at the very same lamppost as the first one, we began to ask ourselves the question, what about our own children? What about our own children? Is it going to come to our own house? But what does the Bible say tonight concerning this awful subject called suicide? Nowhere among the 774,747 words that are in the authorized version of the Bible, nowhere in the, in, 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 among those words tonight is the word suicide found. But what you will find from Genesis through to Revelation, you will find seven people, seven people who took their own lives, seven people who chose death rather than life. Seven people tonight who thought life couldn't go on. But here's the question we're going to ask tonight. Why do people commit suicide? Why do people take their own life? Why do people choose to die? What makes people think tonight there is no point for living? Suicide tonight is a permanent solution to a temporal problem. Suicide is something you can't reverse once it's committed. But let me assure you this tonight. There is no problem, there is no situation, there is no circumstance tonight that the Lord Jesus cannot meet you there. You know, friends, this evening, there's a fine line between sanity and insanity. And depression could hit me as it could hit you. I had a fellow, a gentleman, came into my last employment, plum rate supplies at the trade counter, he said to me, did you hear the awful news in Dromore of that young fella? He says, no, Paddy, why, why, what happened? He says he took his own life. And Paddy said to me, how on earth can somebody be so low to do that? How can someone be so dark in their mind that they decide that they can take their own life. And Paddy said, I can't understand it. And yet, and yet, six months, Paddy took his life. He took his life. Why do people take their own life? Why do people tonight commit suicide? What makes people do such a terrible thing? Let's not forget tonight. Let's not forget what God says. God says tonight, not George McConnell, God says tonight, Thou shalt not kill. 
They believe tonight. That means taking your own life. Do you see your life tonight? Your life tonight is a precious gift from God. Only God has given you that life. And only God has the right to take it. Because God has given you that life, and because God has created you and has created me, that reminds us tonight that there's no problem that we face, no matter how desperate it is, that God cannot solve it. Just two years ago, 2014, yes, two years ago, I got a phone call from a father. Nobody from around here, nobody. To see what I go and visit his son. His son was in the Bluestone unit of Craigavon Area Hospital. He attempted to take his own life. The only thing that stopped him was his wife walked into the bedroom when he had the gun and everything loaded. She forgot her purse. She found him about to take his own life. And mind you, this young fella is a young fella I never thought or would have dreamt of it. She managed to get the gun off him, to talk him round, got the father out, got the doctor out, and got him to the hospital. When you're dealing with a case like this, it's not you that does the talking, it's you that does the listening. And this is what he says. He says, I am at that place. I don't want to live anymore. I'm scared of life. That's what he says. I'm scared of life. He says, death doesn't scare me. He says, life scares me. And I don't want to live. Thank God that young man today has come out of it. And he's going well. He does have his times. He does. But thank God that young man today has turned the corner. A young man who has everything to live for. A beautiful wife. Lovely home. Lovely kids. A young man I never dreamt would have been there. A young man. But I remember speaking a number of years ago to a specialist in this. And I asked him, I says, tell me this, what do you think are the main causes that drives people to take their own lives? This is what he said. He says, you think of these. You think tonight of three P's. And one of those three P's 
can drive people into that place where they become afraid of life. Do you know the first one? Pain. And I'm not talking about physical pain where you break your leg. We're talking about the pain. He says, do you know what the number one one is? The number one pain that people suffer is loneliness. He says it would surprise you how many people, even who live within good families, big families, loving families, but they suffer the pain of loneliness. I can tell you tonight there's many people in the kingdom of Morn who suffer that pain. Loneliness. Secondly, the pain of of unloved, of being unloved. Do you know tonight there's people who believe tonight they're unloved, and yet there's nobody more loved than them? But it's something that locks within people's minds, the pain of loneliness, the pain of unloved. And then he says the pain, this is a big one, he says, among young people, it's the pain of rejection. Being rejected is another great pain that leads many a young person to the darkest point of their life. Pain. The second one, pressure. And he says pressure is another big cause why young people end up taking their own life. The pressure, he said, was this. The pressure of trying to be better than everybody else. The pressure of going beyond your capability. The pressure of exams. The pressure of of, of, of believing that you're a failure. He says to me, many young people comes into me with that. The pressure that young people face today is phenomenal. He says the pressure of exams, the pressure of keeping up with other young people, the pressure young people face today is phenomenal. The third P, pride. He says pride is the most dangerous. Pride doesn't seek help. You know, friends, these are all things tonight that causes young people to take their own life. Pain, pressure, pride. As I spoke to that doctor on this occasion, he spoke about all the, all the earthly circumstances that that have to do with suicide. He dealt with it in such a professional way, but there's one thing he didn't do, and they don't do. They deal with the earthly circumstances, but they don't deal with the eternal consequences. You know, friends, this evening there's, there's the eternal consequences after suicide, especially for those who are not Christians. You know, friends, this evening, if there's anybody here not saved tonight, listen. There's eternal consequences after suicide. because it doesn't end with suicide. 
and it doesn't end a death. Any young person, any older person who takes their own life and they're not saved, and are not saved, face the eternal consequences of being lost in hell. Let me say this tonight. You'll have suicides on earth, but there'll be no suicides in hell. Every young person who has taken their life unsaved, any person who takes their life unsaved, I can tell you now, are cursing the rope that they hung themselves with. Any person who has committed suicide, not saved, they're cursing the gun that they took their lives with. Any young person, or any person for that matter, any person who commits suicide unsaved, unsaved, faces the eternal consequences. You know, friends, tonight, there's absolutely nothing that you can face on this earth, no matter how desperate it may be, that you have to take your life over. Suicide. Why do people commit suicide? But then we need another question tonight. Is there an answer for those who have a suicidal mind? Is there an answer? Thank God tonight there's an answer. And that answer is in the Word of God. I want you to know tonight there's an answer for the suicidal mind. That answer is in the person of the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus tonight is the answer. You know, friends, this evening, what does God want us to know? concerning the pain. There's those tonight who suffer the pain of loneliness. Is there an answer for such? There's an answer for such. The answer is the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus makes a promise tonight. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Do thy friends despise forsake thee? The Lord Jesus will never forsake me. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ tonight is the friend that is closer than any brother. What about the pain of guilt tonight? There's a lot of people suffers that pain, something that they've done that they can't live with themselves. Well, here's what the Bible says. I will cleanse them from all their iniquity whereby they have sinned against me. I will pardon all their iniquities whereby they have sinned against me. What about the pain of being unloved and rejected? I will love you with an everlasting love, and he that cometh to me I will in no ways cast out. What about the pain tonight of pressure? The Lord Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And this is what he promises. I will give you rest. No friend tonight, Christ is the answer for every problem. Friend, there's no problem tonight. There's no situation tonight. There's no circumstance tonight that the Lord Jesus cannot meet you there. He's the answer for every problem. 
He's the answer for every trial. He's the answer for every case. In closing, Pastor Avon Thompson, the late Pastor Avon Thompson, was walking up Donnybrook Street in Belfast one day where he found a young man standing, a young man in his early twenties, standing on the bridge wall about to throw himself over the bridge. Ivan Thompson said, get down to that young man or you're going to end up killing yourself. He says, that's what I'm here to do. Ivan says, you're going to do what? He says, I'm going to take my own life. And Ivan Thompson happened to just turn around and say, tell me this, son, are you saved? Do you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior? He says, no, I don't. I don't have a clue what you're talking about. He says, well, I'll tell you what, get you down to that wall, son, he says, because you don't have a life to take. All you have is an existence. And Ivan was cross with him, and the boy curled up and got down from the wall. And Ivan put the big arm around him and walked him up Donnybrook Street and brought him into a fish and chip shop and bought him a fish supper and took out his New Testament and turned to the verse that we are reading this evening. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I am come, Ivan pointed him. He pointed him to the Lord Jesus, her words, and says, I am come that they may have life and they might have it more abundantly. That young lad who was going to take his own life, there in the chip shop, both of them on their knees, I even led him to the Lord. And tonight, he's in full-time service. I want you to know tonight, dear friend, there's no fear. There's no pain. There's no problem. There's no pressure. Too great tonight that the Lord Jesus cannot meet you. I am come that ye may have life. Ye may have it more abundantly. That's why we need to pray for our Sunday school teachers in these days. That's why we need to pray for the adventurers, young people's meeting in these days, to put into these kids at the early stages of their life the precious Word of God. There's a generation outside these four walls, let me tell you, outside these four walls, who know absolutely nothing of the Lord Jesus. There's people living outside these four walls. You don't need to go to Africa. There's people in Kilkeel tonight who don't even know or believe that God loves them. There's people all around us tonight who are seeking suicide. Why? Because they don't believe or have never heard of the Savior. Let's seek to win them for those of us that are Christians tonight. And if there's any in this meeting tonight not saved, I want you to know tonight there's a Savior for you. And there's no problem, no darkness, no storm tonight so great that the Lord Jesus cannot meet you there. We're not going to sing any more hymns. We're going to bow in prayer, and then we're going to head home. Let's take a wee moment, and we'll bow in prayer together. Now, listen, I want every head bowed, every eye closed. And if there's anybody in this service tonight and you would like to, to speak to me, 
your trouble tonight, and maybe there's something the Lord has put His hand upon tonight that's going on in your life. I want to help you tonight. I want to listen to you tonight. I want you to come to me tonight. Talk it over with us. And we'll pray with you. Because I can assure you tonight, the Lord Jesus is the answer. Don't go home with that burden. Don't carry that care anymore. Let's get it sorted. Christ is the answer for all our problems. It's your answer tonight if you'd only but come. And I trust you'll do that. Lord, tonight I pray earnestly this evening that, Lord, for any tonight that's troubled, for any tonight that's burdened, Lord, draw near tonight, we pray. We thank Thee for Thy love for us. We thank Thee, Lord, for Thy mercy to us. And we thank Thee, Lord, that there is no burden and there is no care that You cannot deal with. Lord, we just leave the remainder of this night with Thee. Thou knowest our hearts tonight. Thou knowest our lives tonight. And we pray that, Lord, for this dark day in which we live, Lord, please, we pray, help others to turn to Thee in their darkest hour, and finding, Lord, in You life and peace and joy. And, Lord, we just commend ourselves to Thee, and we pray, Lord, that Thou would part us in Thy fear and with Thy blessing and take us to our homes in safety, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if anybody wants to speak to me, please do so as you leave. Thank you.